Hello everyone and welcome to episode 153 of the WMA5 series here on the channels. It is Bushido on Osaka 11, John Alicia versus GSP2, our main event. As uh, we do have a good bit of pieces of mail to go through. It's been a while since we've ran through some mail. A lot of extensions for Dwayne Ludwig, Luke Como, Greg Wicken, Taco Alves has left the Minotaur team. Carlos Kana got extended, so did Cristiano Marcielo, Joe Stevenson, and Taco Alves. Josh Neer got extended, Lee Murray. Uh, we did sign Chad Mendez, uh, as far as he was, uh, yeah, even though, you know, obviously we only have so much time left in the save, it is nice to just sign people just in case, you know, we want to bring them up for one fight. Same thing with Eddie uh, Mendez, who has been on a tear. He did lose his last fight, though. He's 5-0 and oh, going into that fight. Would have been nice to see him be 6-0, and because oh, we definitely would have had him fight somebody to end out the, the year. And uh, Shane... So Rosio, I mean uh, Rosario, rather, as he is seven and five, he was in rings for a hot minute. He's going to be in rings again. Don't know why I kept this on there to be honest, because he's just going to be in rings. But uh, there's there's that. Uh, we'll just save that. Just remember uh, to send him down there. Ricardo Almeida got extended. James Tahuna, uh, Roxanne Montefiore got extended. Mark Hughes uh, broke his neck during trading before the uh, Michael Bisping fight. That's happening. At uh, Bushido in London too, so that's going to be rescheduled. Uh, obviously, Mark Hughes will not be fighting now for th to end out the save. Unfortunately for him, uh, he's going to take on Francis Carmont though, Michael Bisping. So that should be a fun fight though. For, uh, Francis Carmont and Bisping they kind of match up a little bit better than Hughes and uh, Bisping did. So I, that's actually an improvement of a fight, if I do say so myself. Fabrizio Verdum wants to fight Seth Petrozelli. That'd be a pretty awesome fight to be honest. That's definitely a Styles clash there. And Jay Suklim got extended, so to Ron Stallings and Lee Murray wants to fight. Ron Faircloth will keep those pieces of mail, just to remember that, in case we have a chance to sign that fight up. But yeah, uh, Bushido and Osaka 11. John Alicio, George St. Pierre. We also have Kelly Gabal Schmitz taking on Vanessa Porto. So two title fights happening on this card. Sotoko Shinashi taking on Amy Fugino. Blake Fredrickson taking on Mac Danzig as well in a lightweight contest. Yushin Okami taking on Alex Stiebling, and then Yoshihiro Akiyama Sexyama taking on Rich Franklin to kick off the show. Obviously, a Osaka native in Sexyama, so that's a fun way to kick off the show. Then Bob Sapp and Peter Arts on the prelim. Fuck yeah, and Hideki Yoshida, Hirotaka Yokoi on the uh, prelim as well. So two heavyweight fights on the prelim. I think it's going to be a fun little card, though. Excited for it to see how it all plays out. As, uh, yeah, for our, you know, they have fought once before at Pride 42 at uh, Fight of a Champion in 2008, which John Alessio won by their decision. So, uh, you know, St. Pierre is making his third defense. If he is successful, uh, of course, that would be huge. But uh, obviously, if Alessio wins, it would be his second reign with the belt. Two of the best pound for round fighters in the world. Alessio ranked 12th, St. Pierre 18th. This is the first, or the fourth time, rather, um, that they have made a event at a Pride event. St. Pierre's won four of his last five fights by decision. John Alessio is the favorite seven to zero on the blur cat staff picks john alicio of course has been an absolute savage it's crazy he's lost twice though and it's been to luis santos and damian maya would love to run those fights back again but obviously i don't think we will be able to uh, unless you know he, he's able to recover very quickly and then we might be able to have the shockwave card have that fight on there because that'd be a lot of fun to see to be honest that because i mean i think that that'd be a fun little rematch for them if he is still the welterweight champion uh, there's a good chance that that fight will be able to take place. It is only July, uh, but we'll see how it all plays out. Uh, and then obviously for George St. Pierre, though, having his last four of the last five wins by unanimous decision. His last finish was against Seattle Sakura, which that uh, was at Bushido and Osaka 7. He's been in a lot of Bushido and Osaka, so that's crazy. One, two, three, five of them, and the sixth one now. That's wild, uh, to be honest. As uh, Yeah, I mean, they've been averaged a very poor some of the fights, uh, you know, as far as the Matt Hughes fight was a lot of fun. He got a finish there, and that's probably why. If it's a finish, he'll get a good rating, rather than that's going to be average to a very poor. It could be an interesting one, for sure, because, you know, as far as for John Alicia, that's the last time he lost. So the, you do have that going into this fight. It's pretty big. Pretty, pretty big main event. Co-main event, though, Kelly Cabal Schmidt taking on Vanessa Porto. Of course, Vanessa Porto. Just been running through women left to right in this division. She is unstoppable. It seems like four of her last five opponents have been submitted to the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the female MMA world. Vanessa Porto is honestly in the pound-for-pound -pound best in the world, no matter what gender, to be honest. She's been unreal. Uh, Kelly Schmitz has won three of her last five fights by decision 
But I, I mean, Vanessa Porto, I think she'll end out the series undefeated. She'll probably be 16, maybe 17 or no, depending if she gets another fight to end out the year. Unreal. Absolutely unreal. Kelly Cabal Schmitz has got a handful, for sure. There's not a lot of people left for Vanessa Porto to phase two that's going to be like a fresh matchup for her, too. It's just crazy. She has the women's division in a stranglehold right now. You know, as far as Kelly Cabal Schmitz going into this fight, she is on a 3 5 win streak, but even then, you know, Tara La Rosa and Aaron Tuffhill, those two girls got ran through by Vanessa Porto and losing to both those girls. That's not a good sign, you know, going into this fight. But, I mean, the Cyborg win's interesting, because I honestly didn't think she'd beat Cyborg. Uh, as far as I think on the betting line, that was an upset. Yeah, it was a mild upset when that happened. It's going to be an interesting one, for sure. I think if Kelly Cabal Schmitz has any chance of winning it, it's going to be by decision. Uh, but I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> that, that, I would say the easy money would be on Vanessa Portel. So Toko Shinashi take it on the Kamikaze Angel, Emi Fujino. Two of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world, in the women's MMA world. Uh, ranked third is Shinashi. Seventh for Fujino as uh, Shinashi trains at Presta. Fujino has over a zero one because of the Kermas uh, team. As she's won four of the last five fights by decision as well. Uh, Shinashi does have a slight favorite in the Blur Cats Epics. Four to three, pretty close. Uh, I mean, Amy Fujino, uh, you know, felt like her first win against Jessica Aguilar. Felt like that was also, you know, as far as she was the favorite. But honestly, I thought Jessica Aguilar would beat her in that fight. She lost to Karina Dam in the past. Uh, Adriana Jenkins in the past. As well, uh, obviously that was almost you know, five years ago, six years ago almost, in, in, in as far as for that case there. But uh, this is a big fight. You know, this is a big fight for both girls. Obviously, you want to end out the save with a big win. But as far as she has, she's 14-1. One loss was in prior to see against Tara La Rosa. Kind of shows you how talented that women's division is. You know, you, you got Tara La Rosa and Shayna Baszler and Aaron Tuffhill. That's kind of outside the, the mark of the, the women's division as far as the heavyweight, or the heavyweight, the women's champion in uh, Vanessa Portel. Just all those girls are, are fucking savages in there. They're tough to beat. Tough to beat. It's going to be a tough fight for Amy Fugino, that's for sure. Blake the Sake Ferguson versus Mac Danzig as Fredrickson trades at Craig Jackson's mixed martial arts. As uh, Danzig is 0 1 against other criminals of that team, Fredrickson ranked 11th in the Pride Lightweight division, which is crazy because that division's pretty stacked. Danzig is 18th. Fredersen's won three of his last five fights by decision. He's got the Blair Grass that picks. Obviously, Blake the Snake Fredersen, though. I mean, start off 3-0. Came in as a UFC champion. Lost to Romino Sato, and it's kind of been downhill ever since. Obviously, the Yamada win was huge. Didn't think he was going to win, though. I believe, from what I remember from that fight, I think Toby Mine, didn't he break his hand in the first round? Oh, yeah, he, he broke his nose. That's what it was. Yeah, that was, uh... It was like early on, it was like in the first or second round, and he had to fight the rest of the fight with a broken nose. It's crazy. It's a crazy win for, as far as for Blake Ferguson. Marino Sato's a savage, so it's crazy. I mean, he's been running through people in that lightweight division as of late. Getting a lot of armbar wins, and, you know, Mac Danzig, I mean, he's been around forever, it seems like. He's had, this is going to be his 10th fight in the, uh, in the save for Pride of C. He's fought a lot of tough people, though, you know, as far as beating Glyson t bows beat Kenny Florian. He's fought Joaquin Hansen, who's had now, you know, a lightweight title fight. Gilbert Melendez, like, that was a, a tough fight to have as well, obviously. And this is a big fight for him. Big fight for both guys. You know, they both could use a win and could really help them out to end out the year as a top 10 lightweight for sure. Could potentially happen there, uh, depending on how that pl fight plays out. And Yushin Okami taking on the Brazilian killer. Alex Stiebling, Alex Stiebling, the favorite, obviously, Yushin Okami hasn't really fought anybody of, of that high level, obviously, hasn't fought a ranked guy yet, did beat Rich Franklin, which I didn't think was going to happen, but, uh, you know, this is probably set up for Alex Stiebling to run right through him, he's 6-8, though, in Pride FC, which is crazy, he lost to Forrest Griffin in his last fight, but he has beaten Lee Murray, they both have beaten Francis Carmont, they do have shared that as far as, you know, Alex Stiebling, he's beaten Chuck Liddell, he's beaten Nate Marcotte, like, he's beaten Scott Smith, too, which that was a split decision win, but still, some big wins. Some, some major wins for him, and that kind of shows you the type of talent he does have. It's just uh, that middleweight division, it's a fucking, it's a pit of death in that division. Everybody from 1 to 25 is a savage. You you have to earn every type of win you get, but I think Alex Stevens is going to get that win, though, here at uh, Bushino Saka 11. It's for Saxiyama versus Rich Ace Franklin. So we're both veterans, you know, as far as we saw Rich Franklin come in as a rookie, and now 
at the tail end of his career in the save. You know, as far as he, you know, his debut was at uh, Demolition at Pride 21 in 2002. Was you know, 9-0 at one point, had the Rampage loss. There, you know, as far as once the back half of the 2000s hit, that's kind of when he started losing a little bit more. He started fa facing other guys as well, though. It'd be Mark Cott, Faircloth, Jeremy Horn, uh, even Leopardo Cerro, Dan Henderson. You know, there, there's some tough guys. You know, there's some middleweight champions in there, and it's tough. Tough, but he's beating some tough guys, though, too. You know, the, the Tim Kennedy win is pretty huge. I'd even say Rodrigo's Hughes is, is a pretty big win, but that's kind of the last... You know, ranked guys that they've be that he's beaten, and that was 2007. It's been a, a long time coming for him. As uh, this is a big win for him if he can get it. Saksiyama, though, as far as he, uh, he's given up a lot of weight, he's given up a lot of size. Uh, but uh, he's got the Osaka crowd behind him. Uh, as far as coming in with uh, a two-fight win streak over Nate Corey, Gazier and Nakamura would be a huge win for him. Of course, he was at the Bushido Osaka card last, you know, the last one that happened in November last year, so it'd be nice to see him get another win in front of his hometown fans. And our prelims, Bob the Beast Sap is a Dutch Lumberjack Peter Arts. I fucking love this fight. I cannot believe Bob Sap is a large margin favorite, but this fight's going to be incredible. I don't care if Peter Arts hasn't won since April 2008. You have two absolute behemoths in there. Obviously, Bob Sap at 6'5". 275, probably fights at like 300 pounds, although I hit negotiations to the fight history. Lost to Hungman Choi, though. Got fucked up by Hungman Choi, to be exact. And the Brock Lesnar fight, too, was crazy. And he's had a lot of fun fights throughout the, the years here with us. And, uh, I mean, this would be a massive win for him if he can get a win to end out the save. Because I feel like this is going to be one that could be over in an instance. As far as, it's crazy to think he's knocked out Hungman Choi. So, and Peter Arts does have that advantage over him. I wouldn't count out Peter Arts, honestly. I, this would be a fun fight to see, though, that's for sure. Excited to see how the prelims roll as Hideki, Osaka, uh, Hideki Yoshida, rather, taking on Hirotaka Yokoi. As Hideki Yoshida is the favorite, even though Hideki Yoshida came in as a fucking Olympian level Judokan fighter. Didn't really hit everything that I think the goal was set for him, you know, as far as early on the save. Went 3 and L's and ran the Crow Cop, and pretty much wasn't the same ever since. He did beat Bob Sapp, though. I remember that fight. That was at the uh, Total Elimination Absolute. That was during the Heavyweight Grand Prix. They ran into Josh Barnett. and Yeah, that, that basically went, <laughs> ended that little run. It's fought some tough guys. You know, when you kind of look at it, you know, the Crow Cop lost, the Kezik Vegeta lost, Josh Barnett, Fabrizio Vadum, Cain Velasquez. Like, Cain Velasquez is now a top 10 guy. Like, it's, he's not even know, and he's fought, like, some tough-ass dudes. So that, he just kind of ran into some very, very tough opponents. Up in here, Taka just didn't really pan out as ho as hopeful as I thought he would be once we signed him. Now he came in off a loss, and then he lost in rings as well. He came in against Frank Mir, lost, and lost to Alexi Atlantic. Really, besides the Bob Sapp win, that's all he's got. And even then, he got destroyed by Tom Erickson, which is brutal to see. And uh, you, you don't want to see that, especially 44-year-old Tom Erickson. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, both guys, judo backgrounds, should be an even fight. Uh, I would give the, the edge to Ushida, so it makes sense that he is the favorite on the betting line. Mark Goddard's referee, ringside judges, here we go. Koi gets up close, clenches up with him. It's definitely going to be a race to who can get the other one down on a sweep. As Yoshida, as Yoshida rather, is trying to wrestle him up against the ropes, he does so. Tries to go through a knee to the thigh, but uh, Yokoi sees the opportunity to get him up against the ropes. And just a bit of a stalemate here. Now some short punch to the ribs. Trying to attempt the knee. But uh, Yokoi just tightens the clinch to stop that. Shida goes for the knee again to the thigh. But gets wrapped around again. And Rockar is going to separate him. Yeah, but they're just going to come right back to <laughs> into a clinch. And a bit, I, I mean, so far it's just been a stalemate. Uh, as far as they've had a couple of shots. A couple of instances. But mostly... When Yokoi's got him up against the ropes, Yoshida reversed it, and the same thing you could be said for Yoshida. As well as Yokoi, there's an elbow to the face, though. So Yoshida trying to hit a knee strike, but that gets countered again. Trying to get some dirty boxing against Yoshida, but that's not happening either. Small punches to the ribs. Mark Otis got to separate him again. We already know what's going to happen. They're going to just come right back into the clinch. Short punches to the ribs. Knee strike to the thigh. Yeah, I mean, 
They're just going to kind of nickel and dime each other with these short punches, not really looking for that big finish, unfortunately. As Yoshida is the aggressor in the clinch, Yoshida hits Yokoi with a big knee strike to the body. Got him against the ropes. A couple of knee, or a couple of elbows now to end out the round. Yeah, I mean, it's close. It's super fucking close. I mean, 11 to 12 on the strikes. I guess you could, if you're going off of damage, maybe Yoshida did a little bit more, but... Very, very close. Let's see what happens in the second. Yoshida steps in and grapples with him, obviously. And uh, Yokoi doesn't let Seth Beach from back. Yoshida this time pins him up against the ropes. Got him up against the ropes. Thank God we're now in the five-minute mark, though, of the uh, the rounds. But now halfway point in the round of round two. Mark Otto's got to restart him, which... <laughs> who cares? He's just going to come right back into a clinch. And, uh, Yoshida's definitely... Got the better of him this round, but maybe uh, Yokoi can do something here to end out the round. I, I just don't think it's going to happen. Yoshida's getting it's looking pretty ragged, though. Yeah, Yokoi. Waiting for some, you know, trying to get some dirty boxing going. But Yoshida counters, and now he's got him up against the ropes. And another round is over, and uh, literally no strikes landed the entire five-minute round. Brutal. <laughs> Come together to clinch. Same idea. Yokoi doesn't let up each from back. Yoshida's trying to get him against the ropes. He does so. Your core is now tired. I mean, this is brutal. Absolutely brutal. Yeah, not happening. Suck against the ropes. They're going to separate them, but who cares? Again, they're just going to come back into the clinch. This is what happens sometimes. You got two judo fighters fight against each other, especially heavyweight judo fighters when they get tired out and it just turns into a snooze fest. That's exactly what happened there. I mean... Yeah, I, w I would say Yoshida would have won that one just based off of the first round, but that was an awful fight. Jesus Christ, as I think of all the sponsors, all his fans, brutal. Absolutely brutal. It's Bob the BSAP versus the Dutch Lumberjack Peter Arts. Hopefully, we get this card on the right track, and we have an exciting knockout here. Mark God is back out there. Please be a knockout. <laughs> just please, for the love of God. They touch gloves. Coming forward on the attack. Neither fired a glance. Significant strike, though. Mrs. Left jab doesn't make contact on the low kick, either. Oh, just great. They're just whiffing on everything. And that gets checked. Clean right hand, though, off the counter. And Peter Arts is rocked with that one. Sap tries to finish him with a huge right hook, but that gets avoided. Peter Arts just regained himself. His counter's right hand with a jab and a blancing blow with a high kick. Bob Sapp's definitely tired already. Left hand, and Bob Sapp scores with a massive right hook on the jaw, knocks him down, looking to finish the fight here. And he does so. Oh my god, Bob Sapp. You fucking beast. <laughs> he is a beast. Mauls him. Mauls him. That was crazy. I can't believe Pete Arts didn't get anything uh, rocking there, but he wants to fight Jerome Lee Banner next. He wants all the K1 kickboxers. That makes sense. That They match up the best anyways, but... Sexy Yama taking on Rich Ace Franklin now onto the main card. Plus 150. Not to minus 200. Pretty close on the betting line there. Mark Goddard. Again out there. Is he just the only referee assigned for the card? Uh, Sexy Yama in there. Roar from the crowd, obviously. Touch of gloves. Sexy, uh, Sexy Yama looking to get some grappling started, but Rich Franklin was the, took the initiative there. Sexy Yama with weak, tentative jab. Jab hits him from Franklin and catches him with a spin kick to the body. Good jab by Sexy Yama to catch that kick. Look for the takedown, kick it. I'm down, got him against the ropes. Here comes the judo throw. Great job there. Gives up his back. Looking for the rear naked choke. If he gets the hooks in, oh boy. Yeah, he's got a body triangle. Very tight. Fights off some right hands. Looking for the rear naked choke. Not happening, though. No. Loads some big right hands. He flies him out. That's got to be it. God damn. Oh, he's got him that time, though. Well, what a win for Yoshiro Akiyama. 9 and 2. Rich Franklin, now, I mean, you gotta go to the drawing board and be like, what What the fuck am I doing with my life? 14 and 8. Just a brutal second half of the decade, which is pretty much on part of what happened to him. I just felt like once Anderson Silva came into the UFC, he just became not the same, you know, top middleweight in the world. It just, you know, and it, it was downhill ever since then. But uh, Saxiama beating Rich Franklin with that rear naked choke in the first round. Great win for Saxiama. He praises. Uh, you know, Rich Franklin for the tough fight. Gives him show respect. Praises team at the Kata Dojo. Sponsors supporting financially as well. Yushin Okami against the Brazilian killer, Alex Stiebling. Minus 340. Plus 270. Both with a wrestling background, but one is a, has a judo background, the other one has a Muay Thai background. Could be a pretty fun matchup here. There we go. Mario Yamasaki's a referee. As, uh, let's see, the ring's eye judges. Here we go. Round one begins. They clinch up. Stiebling's the more dominant in the, in the grapple. 
Can't get at those. Who probably fights it off. Well, they're just gonna have a bit of a stalemate. God damn it. Oh, well, finally, Okami ends up back against the ropes. There's a hard foot stomp, another stomp. Steven Lang looking for another foot stomp, but Okami takes the position to, uh, takes the time, rather, to switch out, and now that he's in control, looking for the Muay Thai clinch. Oh, shit, he's got him. Oh, no, never mind. As uh, Steve Lang looking for the takedown. Unsuccessful, though. Look at the sweep. Again, that uh, great block. Okami just fight for his life here. Steve Lang now fighting for his life. Looking for the judo throw. As Steve Lang looking to stop the attempt to throw, then using his wrestling to take control of the grapple. Looking for the takedown. Not happening again. Jesus Christ. And finally, someone gets taken down. It's an excellent outside leg trip. Steve Lang gets thrown to the mat. Look at you, Shin Okami, go, though. This is a good start for this. And looking for the Kimura. That's not happening, though. As Okami throws a few left hands, mainly just trying to catch his breath, it blocks Steve Lang, so he tries, tries to transition the guard. Okami throwing a couple of punches designed to keep him guessing. Trying to transition the guard, can't quite manage it, though. Keeps him guessing a few quick strikes. Okami fires off a handful of punches now. Each easy being blocked with gloves. Steve Lang's trying to pull guard. Yamasaki stands them both back up. They clinch up, start tracking for position. Okami wrestles his way into a dominant position in the grapple. Got him in the clinch. Steve Lang fights it off. There's a nice straight right hand from Steve Lang, though. Steveling's the aggressor. That's a great first round for both guys. I would say Okami had the better round, though, for sure, and he's up in the fight. We'll see what happens in the second. Damn, they thought it was a boring I mean, the first half was, but they started picking it up there at the at the back half. 1-2 from Steveling. Fails the land. Okami's going to clinch with him. Trying to get a, a sweep here, maybe? No, nope. just going for the Muay Thai clinch again. As Okami ends up back against the ropes. Look for the trip. Not happening. Okami's takedown defense is incredible, though. He is locked in. Steveling finally gets him down. First takedown of the fight that's successful. Look at a pass, get side control to scramble. Steveling still ends up at side control, though, off the scramble. As uh, Steveling's going to end out the round on top in control, uh, but not doing a whole lot. I mean, he did land a couple of jabs, though, on the ground, obviously. 26, so. I mean, he's going to have to have a major third round, I think. And one for the takedown. Didn't get it dealt. Got him up against the ropes. Gets the inside leg trip. Blocks him to sweep, blocks Okami there, tries to sweep on the bottom, that's not happening either. So again, another, I mean, unfortunate that this fight kind of turned into a bit of a grapple fest. Which, I mean, that, that there is that, anytime you have that opportunity when both guys have a wrestling background, you, you do have a chance of that happening. But I just thought, with the Muay Thai and Judo background, it'd be a little bit more back and forth, but this was a bit of a stalemate. Uh, for this fight, this is going to be interesting, because Steebling had the second and the third, but he lost the first. Obviously, you lose the 10-minute round, that's going to be a tough advantage to uh, have to overcome, but it's going to be looking like a split decision win for Alex Steebling. I think that's the right decision, because uh, even though the first round was uh, basically all Yushin Okami, he was co trying to control him against the ropes and was doing a lot more, and I think the entire fight, you'd have to give that to Steebling, but... Another poor fight. A very poor fight, to be exact. So, that's not great for the main card. As Alex DM thanks everyone connected to the Lions Den, helping him prepare for the fight. The sponsor supporting financially. He says, as all respects to Yushin Okami, praises toughness. As our lightweight contest, Blake the Snake Fredrickson, Mac Danzig, plus 180, minus 230 for Blake Fredrickson. Pretty close. On the betting line, pretty close. Yamasaki's a referee. Ringside judges, here we go. Ferguson throws a 1-2. Doesn't hit either punch, though. Still initiating the punches there. There's a jab in exchange from a pair of them from Danzig. Lands a jab and beauty for straight right from Blake. Kind of left hand from Mac Danzig. Doesn't tremble with his opponent. Combination with a, I believe that's a leg kick. Yeah. And it's a quick exchange. Doesn't produce anything. Look at the step in and grapple. Fredrickson still taking the initiative. There's a left hand, but Danzig avoids the high right head kick. Blake Fredrickson really showing off his uh, striking ability here. There's a jab and a right cross. Kind of jab. Does a connect though. There's a jab and a right hand from Fredrickson. Oh, Danzig's got him in a clinch. Can't do it, though. Ends up being out-wrestled. Looking for the trip. Not happening either. Got him up against the ropes this time, does Danzig? Nope, still can't get him up against the ropes. Oh, he's got control. Fredrickson looking for the takedown. That's not happening. Now we get another grapple fest after uh, Fredrickson was out-striking him. I mean, I don't blame Dan uh, Tan uh, Mac Danzig, rather, but he finally gets the takedown. It's ugly, but he's finally got him. Got him in a loose face lock type hold. Looking for a uh, knee. He does hit the knee. The side of the head. I'll turn it up to make Ferguson. Looking for the anaconda choke. Not happening, though. No. Rolls over. And it's a scramble. Ferguson ends up on his back. So Danzig is in control on top. Looking for an arm bar from the bottom, though. Ferguson cannot secure it, though. Can't get, uh, can't quite secure side control. So it's a scramble now. 
as Fredson ends up losing out in the scramble. That's a good job by Mike Danzig once they were on the ground. Minute left, a couple of punches there. And that's, I mean, that's a good round for both guys. Obviously, Ferguson did a little bit more when they were standing, but you're looking at the fight metrics. Or not the side with Mac Danzig there. That's a tough one. Second round, Danzig looks for the takedown. Can't quite, quite get it, though. Ends up hopping in place. Drives him against the ropes, looking for the takedown. Doesn't get it either. Wow, ends up pulling his leg free, moving to the center. Ferguson's starting to get tired, though. There's a counter jab from Danzig. 1-2 doesn't land either blow. Connects the jab, misses the low kick. Both fighters fail to throw any type of strikes there. Doesn't connect to the left jab. Also finds his right cross block. Misses the left hand. This is brutal. As he scores the jab, misses the head kick. There's a left jab, but also is wide of the head kick mark. And even uh, there's two left jabs with the leg kick follows up. is easily caught by Danzig. Looking for the takedown. He's got him. Trying to pass. to scramble. Grabs him. With a waist lock. Just scanning back control. Looking to take him right back down. He does so. Upon impact, though, loses control. And it's another scramble. Danzig mistakenly leaves his back exposed. That's a great job by Fredrickson. He's looking for the rear naked choke. Doesn't have enough time to really capitalize on that, but that's a great uh, comeback for Blake Fredrickson. I'd say he took that round. I know it's kind of weird to think that Danzig had the two takedowns, uh, but I, it just felt like Blake did a little bit more. We'll see, though, how the judges... I, I'm sure the judges have a Danzig 2 nil, which is terrible for Blake Fredrickson. He's going to have to get a finish here. So he lands the left jab. Right hook's block, goes with a leg kick, four six strike exchange. Fredrickson stepping back into the pocket, stepping into strike, slipping past the right hook, attacks with a left jab and a right cross. Throws some strikes and fast leg kicks, but Danzig was equal to all of them. If Danzig can get him down again, that's going to be bad news for Blake Fredrickson. But he's so far doing a good job. Can't hit the step up jab, hits the right cross though. Just starting to lower his hands a little bit. Halfway point, Danzig looking for the takedown again. Not happening though. Got him against the ropes, and he's got him. Oh, look at that, though. Danzig gets caught in an arm bar, has to tap out. Holy shit, what a win for Blake Fredrickson. Pulls that out of his fucking ass. Jesus Christ. I mean, I'm assuming he would have lost this if it went the distance. What a win for Blake Fredrickson. I mean, that's he steals that one. Giving thanks to... uh his team does uh, Blake Ferguson praising his team at Greg Jackson's Mixed Martial Arts. It's very sponsor all the fans who came on support him. If you're asked, he'd be interested in fighting next. It applies to Cristiano Marcelo. It'll be a tough challenge to beat one. He'd be interested in trying. Before we get to the co-main, our uh, next fight, Satoko Shinashi, the Kamikaze Angel, Emi Fujina, our last uh, non-title fight on the card. 14-1, 11-4. Should be an exciting one, that is for sure. Yozo is our referee. Ringside judges is Fujino towering over the 4 4 10. Satoko Shinahashi. Here we go. They touch gloves. Jab at home. Catches her with a right hook. Those a 1 2. Doesn't land either blow though. Catching her. Moving in fast and is able to clinch up with Fujino. Doesn't get Fujino blocked. Uh, any type of takedown there. Again, that gets blocked. Got another stalemate. Has a sharp stomp there. Another sharp stomp. Looking for the takedown now. Gets a hold of a leg. Fujino drags her down. Good job there by Amy Fujino. See what she can do. On the ground in control. Just kind of keeps her at bay. Trying to pass from half guard. But it's a scramble for Shinachi trying to get back up. But Fujino is the first one to quickly grab her. For sure, up against the ropes. Looking for another takedown. Not happening though. Fujino looking for a takedown. She's got it. Looking for the rear naked choke. Holy shit. What a win for Emmy Fujino. Did not see that coming. A first round finish. And uh, what a win. That is massive. Absolutely massive. Light work. Emi Fujino says. It gives her name check to everyone at Roots, all of her sponsors, and all of her friends, famous supporters, praises her opponent there, gives her a show of respect, but what a win. And uh, could be taking on Vanessa Porto sooner rather than later, we shall see. Or she'll be taking on Kelly Cabal Schmidt. What would be a huge upset, though, for Kelly Cabal Schmidt? So here we go, shooter box, Henzo Gracie Jiu Jitsu, the undefeated wrecking machine. That is Vanessa Porto looking to make it 16 and 0. Mark Goddard, the referee, ringside judges. There is Kelly Gavantra. It's not going to touch gloves. She's probably going to regret that. Porto looking for the trip takedown. Stops the attempted trip and has. And she gets out wrestled. Looking for the takedown. Yep. And then down she goes. This is not good. Look at the pass. A scramble. Kelly Gavantra is left turtled up. Vanessa Porto with some right hands. Not doing a lot of damage, but still just keeping her down there. As uh, looking to drag her back down to the ground. Not happening, though. Kelly Kowalczyk's keeping her there, looking for the Gamora. 
to throw her back down inside control. Blocks attempt to sweep, looking for mount now. Almost gets it, but pucks her hips. Does Kelly Kabultra Mitz, and the scramble begins. Kelly Kabultra Mitz now looking to pass half, con er, looking to pass half guard, rather. Not happening. Tries to transition to full guard. That's not happening either. Look at Kelly Kabultra Mitz go. Landed some shots, looking to get side control. It's another scramble. Comes out on top, though. Does Kelly Kabultra Schmitz. She's surviving. She's doing a good job. Right into the body. Mark is going to stand him up. And Porto looking for another takedown. Brilliant sprawl from Kelly Cabal Schmitz. By the way, with right hands doesn't really do a whole lot of damage, though. And that's the end of the first round. I mean, pretty telling. Pretty telling. Kelly Cabal Schmitz did a really, really good job in that first round. Vanessa Porto, she had the takedown, but that was pretty much it. I mean, she got outstruck. Felt like she didn't have control of the majority of the round. I would have given that to Kelly Cabal Schmitz if it was me. Porto looks like she's about to shoot. Kelly Cabal Schmitz steps in fast, looks for the clench, knee strike to the body. Porto looking to take her down. Not happening either. Porto's up against the ropes. She gets her down here. This is going to be massive. Uh, keeps calm, manages to pull Kelly Cabal Schmitz in tight, preventing the takedown. Stops it again. Still looking for those takedown attempts. Now Porto is the one that is in control. Got her up against the ropes. Uh, Porto blocks it again. Look at Porto looking for the takedown. She's got it this time. Looking for the arm bar. Thought that was going to be it, to be honest. Looking for the Darth choke now. Oh my goodness. She finishes with her with the Darth choke. She's a fucking savage in there. 16 and 0. Who's going to stop her? Nobody. Fucking nobody. Unreal. Yeah, as a name check, they're going to shoot a box all of her very sponsor, all of her fans, famous supporters. That's Porto celebrates still being the Pride Women's Champion. Says it's, she's looking forward to the next challenger that steps forward. And our main event, the natural, John Alessio taking on George Rush St. Pierre. As 23 and 11, 21 and 5, mixed martial arts, pursuing Jiu Jitsu kickboxing background, Canadian Martial Arts Center for GSP, Greg Mar Drag Jesus, Greg Jackson's mixed martial arts for John Alessio. Uh, both Canadians, though. Uh, as uh, we shall see. How this fight plays out. Will we see a new champion or will George St. Pierre avenge that loss and get a win and retain his belt? Mario Yamasaki's referee ringside judges. Here we go. Round one begins. They clinch. St. Pierre's the aggressor in the clinch. Can't quite get him down. As Alessio can't get, keep control of St. Pierre. He's being pushed around. And now St. Pierre is uh, not in dominant position in the grapple. Alessio got him against the ropes. Looking for the takedown. He's got him. Look for another Kimura. Jesus, I thought that was going to be it for a second. And it's a handful of punches, easily being blocked with gloves, trying to transition the coin. That's not happening. Yeah, just keeping him down there. Yeah, uh, as far as Yamasaki is going to have to stand him up with a, about the halfway point in the first. Lisio again with the advantage. There's a big knee strike to, uh, during the grapple. Got him against the ropes. Is it going anywhere, though? Trying to push him against the ropes. Manages to keep control against the ropes. Looking for a takedown. God damn. Big ass Greco Roman slam. St. Pierre's though, and some small strikes. Clearly just taking a moment to catch his breath. Alessio trying to get some separation, trying to scramble, but just going to too slow for him is Alessio, and say so he gets caught inside control. Knee strikes to the ribs. Now it's a good job by St. Pierre to end out the round on top, landing some big strikes. A couple of elbows now. They're not doing much damage, but he, he mixed it up a little bit with some ribs, to the knees of the ribs, with some elbows. He, he did a good bit. I think he won that round, to be honest. It was pretty close, though. Second round now, they get up close and over under. St. Pierre has control. Knee strike to the body. Trying to get him up against the ropes, but Alessio fights that off. Trying to get him up against the ropes. He's got him pinned this time. Look for the takedown. He's got the big takedown. Look for Mount. Oh, he's got side control. That's a good stop by St. Pierre. Fires off some punches. Minute left. Uh, St. Pierre's trying to pull guard on Alessio, and that's not happening. No, trying to transition to guard. That's not happening either. Terrible second round. All John Alessio. What happens here in the third is here, St. Pierre? It's now or never, because he's probably down. And uh, he's got to win this round for sure. Misses with all the strikes combination and with a spin kick. And he even gets caught on that spin kick. Got, got him up against the ropes. Looking for the takedown. He's got the takedown. That will probably do it for George St. Pierre. As he passes guard, can't quite secure side control. St. Pierre scrambles the position, ends up in half guard. This isn't good. <laughs> this is not good at all. At least he'll get side control, but St. Pierre was ready for it. And the scramble begins. Clock runs down on Alessio being smothered against the ground. St. Pierre smothers Alessio with his body pushing forward and down. And that is the end of your fight. In your main event, your winner will be John Alessio again. The welterweight champion of the world. 
tough break for St. Pierre. Had a great first round, just couldn't withstand it. You know, as far as St. Pierre, not sure what happened in the second and the third. He just didn't have enough. Didn't have enough, and that's brutal. That's a brutal way to lose the belt. And you just don't have enough to keep up with him. As that well, he has a name trick that went to Craig Jackson's mixed martial arts, all of his favorite sponsors, all of his friends, famous supporters, holding the welterweight title up high, celebrating being the new champion. And warns that he's intending to have a very long reign. Well, I don't know about that, since the save's going to be over before you know it. Man, it sucks that that Stiebling Yushin Okami fight was brutal, because we saved the card a little bit uh, with the, uh, the, the lightweight fight and then the women's fight. Title fights were decent, but uh, it was nice to see Vanessa Porto get a finish, though. That was crazy, and sucks that we didn't get a finish in the main, but it is what it is. There, as far as that regard, we increased our popularity, though. That's all you can ask for. Yeah, performance bonus there for Gino. Uh, yeah, that's probably about it. Just for Gino and Alessio. Makes sense, you yeah, know, just from that perspective. Good stuff, yeah, yeah. Four million dollars profit. John Alessio the Envy for Gino, making a solid milli thanks to uh, we upgraded the bonuses. So that's huge. Yeah, I mean, you're gonna be making a shit ton of money to end out the year. Big stuff there. So that will do it for this episode. Thank you all for watching. As we will catch you guys next time, and uh, we're hoping for a big show to end out. As far as we're hoping for some major fights. Some exciting fights to end out this series, as it's uh, now or never. You know, as far as if people want that title fight, if they're just outside the bubble, you know, type of thing, it, it's now or never. They gotta put it all out there on the line. So hopefully, we get some fun fights here upcoming. As I believe the next card is yes, the worldwide taping, which we have not named the main event yet, which we do know what the main event's gonna be. We just haven't. Hey, it's gonna be Kenny Floyd versus Jose Aldo. That's a fun lightweight fight. I know it's not maybe the biggest of names, but those two guys are going to bring it. We're also going to have Fedor and Rafael Carino on that card. Should be a fun one. Then Pride 49, Big Nog versus Big Big Rothwell. It's Big Ben versus Big Nog. And a heavyweight title fight. And also going to have Uriah Faber versus Ramino Sato in a lightweight contest as well for the lightweight title. Uh, BJ Penn, Jackie Manson's on that card as well. Should be a fun one, but it's just crazy. We just only have... From, Jul from August to December now, left in the save. Hard to believe, as we will catch you guys next time. Take care, everyone.